One of the things that every male faces at some point in their lives is what does it mean to be a man, a provider, a protector, a physical person who can attract uh, the woman of their dreams, who can have a successful career and a fit body in a life that is connected to God. And every season of being a man, from being a young boy to adulthood and beyond, is met with a ton of challenges. And those challenges are opportunities to become the man that God wants us to be. But often these challenges defeat most men. That's why here in 2024, the loneliness epidemic among men is alarming. The rate of men wanting to no longer live and to end their lives is alarming. And this is across the board of men in the church, <clears throat> men of faith, men without a spiritual background, men who maybe are connected to some faith journey, Christians, etc., but continue to live this life of quiet desperation that nobody knows about. These are young men who may be working at Starbucks, go to school, work at the mall or maybe at a, at a place, a business where they're beginning to learn some skills, all the way to professional men with, quote, successful marriages and a perfect life. And then, of course, there are those who everyone can tell that are struggling, and those men face even more scrutiny. The key that I have found to be a successful man is to go back to the basics. To go back to the basics of acknowledging where you're at, first of all. Whatever situation you're in, whatever addiction or loneliness or maybe you're just simply hiding from the world, whatever place you're in, being honest with yourself is the first step towards freedom. Freedom is possible for those who are vulnerable and honest. <clears throat> now, there are many men, quote unquote, out there, red pill men and the manosphere, it's called, that would say to most people that to be vulnerable is the, the worst thing you can do. And that is probably one of the most toxic messages that men can hear. We're not talking about weakness. We're not talking about being f a female. We're not talking about having any sort of energy that isn't masculine. We're talking about being honest and being strong enough to be vulnerable and open in the right situation with the right people, not with everyone. But this may be fallacy that being honest is, is to not be a real man. It's something that the Bible talks about, talks against it. The Bible actually says that God gives grace, meaning power, charisma, gives good gifts to the humble. But he actually, it says that he resists the, quote, man's man, the proud. So not only does God give everything that you've ever wanted to those who are humble, vulnerable, but God actually resists. He is against men who are proud, who are puffing out their chest. Now, humility brings about confidence. Humility actually brings about peace and strength and perseverance. But when we do those things out of our own strength, it runs out. It's actually our own energy that does not last. What the women in your life need, your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, your boss, your church, what the world around, around you needs is for you to be a man's man, a man of God. A man who first starts with vulnerability and honesty and who's able to assess where he's at physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, professionally. It's important to assess. So take an inventory of where you're at today in those five key areas. Where are you at physically? 
I know that my body is not where it needs to be. I have to be honest. You and I as men. Now, before we get into all the excuses or victims or even health issues, which are important, assessing your physical reality is about you believing that it can be better. Number two, assess your spiritual life. Assess where you want to be as a man of God, as a spiritual leader to your wife, to your kids, to the potential mates that you may one day have. You might be involved in church. You might be out of church. It's not really about church attendance or about being holy or perfect. It's about your dependency upon God versus giving up or depending upon your own strength, your career, etc. Number three is assess your financial success. Are you earning what you want? Not what you necessarily lost. It's not about even wanting what other people have, but it's about what you know you can achieve, what you deserve. Is that a six-figure salary? Is that uh, seven figure, eight figures? Are we talking about 50,000, 30,000? Where are you at in that scale? Depending on your age, depending on your goals. Assess that again, not to say, oh no, I'm in trouble, but to say, what do I want? Number four, assess your psychological, your emotional state. Where are you at in your emotional state? Not relationships, but just the key part, your inner man. The real you when it comes to loneliness versus happiness. Companionship versus solitude. Joy versus depression. Trust versus anxiety. Hope versus hopelessness. Assess where you're at. It's okay wherever you're at. But we just want you to be honest and to say, what do I want? What do I need? Where is my hope meter? You can include in their addictions as well. Because that, a lot of times addictions or habits, gambling, drinking, pornography, um, whatever it may be, overworking, workaholism, being uh, maybe a, a flirt or inappropriate at home or at work, whatever it may be, all of that goes under your psychological and emotional uh, meter. Where are you at with that? One through ten. And then lastly is where are you at in your career? Do you, it's kind of related to money, but in some ways it's related more to purpose. Are you in your purpose? You don't know your purpose. Are you discovering your purpose? Maybe you lost your purpose. You've lost your way. You have failed. You are in the gutter. You are in this place of surrender and death, you could say, emotionally, spiritually, professionally. That's okay. Is that where you're at? Be aware of it. And again, what is your purpose? What, it, what would you want to become at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50 and beyond? Assessing all these areas honestly is the beginning of your happiness, of your joy, of your gozo. And working these things with, most of all, with God and yourself, just in your own thoughts. You can also, of course, have a friend. You can reach out to me. But these are the steps that I believe makes a man, a true man of God. Not a church God or church going church. Not a man who goes to church. Not a man who his wife has to drag to church. Not a man who just puts his kids in a Christian school. Those are all fine. But a man who is not overwhelmed by life because he knows that God is his strength. That's really the goal. From there comes all the rest of the success that men want. If you and I, as men, are connected to the source who is God and are in living community with that source, then your wife will notice, your girlfriend, your, your friends, people at work, the people that you go to, the, go to the gym with. If you have kids, they will notice, your peers, everyone around you will benefit and receive the blessing of your blessing. And so that's what I believe in 2024, even though we're basically almost to the end of it here, or at least halfway through it. We're in August here as I record this. These are the things that will help you. Now, if you're going through a crisis right now, a health, financial, emotional, a trauma-induced uh, difficulty, then that's a little bit different. And we can discuss trauma. 
because that taints and tints all of these things in a, in a different way. It almost makes all these things seem worse than they really are. So we have to start with trauma. But assuming that you're not at a place of trauma or of a defeat or of, of, deep, um, of a deep low in your life, this is a place to start. If you are at that place, then we can discuss that. And I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So thanks, for much for, thanks, so thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram for videos like this in this community that we're building called Gozo, which means joy. Thanks so much for watching.